Do we know what makes us happy? A lot of the time we don't. Now, of course, I know that if my kid gets a great report on his report card, I know that makes me happy. It does make me happy. Uh, well, on the other hand, these are not trivial things. Everybody thinks they've got a blue Monday. Actually, it's not really true. <laughs> uh, everybody thinks that, um, you know, that, that a variety of things that have a big impact on them don't really. Um, and Wilson has also shown that people are terrible about predicting what kinds of effects on things like that. So you've got people who are um, college students who are dating, uh, and you ask them, what do you think, how, how, what would it do to you if this were to break up? You know, miserable, I wouldn't be able to hold my head up, I couldn't sleep, and so on. Actually, uh, that's not true. Uh, or the, the, the unpleasantness only lasts for a small amount of time. Or you ask people who are just coming who are, uh, into a university, freshmen, uh, what if you got dorm X? What do you think it would mean to you? you say, oh my God, that's, that's terrible. It's, it's dark, it's gloomy, the people there are boring, it would wreck my life. And actually, there's no, they're no less happy. Even uh, everybody assumes they'd be thrilled and delighted forever if they won the lottery. That only lasts for a few weeks, and actually, lottery winners end up being less happy than they were before. I mean, uh, I mean, their neighbors are begging them for money, etc. Um, the flip is true as well. I think it happens for death. Uh, one's own. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. That would be interesting. <laughs> but it, it, death doesn't. Bereavement is. Uh, doesn't last as long, or it's right. not as bad as, right. as we, we think it would predict would be. Bereavement doesn't. But if you ask people, what do you think it would do to you to become paraplegic, couldn't move your leg, people take it for granted that would wreck their lives. And of course, it's terrible for a while, but eventually, I mean, they're never as happy as they were before or as the average person, but the misery does not last. And they find pleasure in things that we don't. <laughs> they say, I, I enjoyed brushing my teeth today. So, I mean, they, there's a... Uh, Wilson and Dan Gilbert, uh, his colleague, um, have a notion that we don't understand how good our psychological immune system is. That is, ways we have of lifting ourselves up, and we don't know what the hell is going on. Dissonance reduction is one. You know, uh, somebody moves from the Midwest to California, it's a, but it's a different job, and he has to go to a small house, and so on. How do I, he's going to lose some things. But he reduces dissonance by saying, you know, who wants to take care of a big house like I had in the Midwest? And the weather here just covers a multitude of sins and so on. So we're very good at uh, rationalizing, explaining away, at making things uh, better uh, than, uh, than, than we think we could. So, and they have a concept of immune neglect. We don't understand that about ourselves. We don't understand, understand that we will adapt. It's amazing how ignorant we are of things that are really important to us and how much we insist that we know why these things happened or, or would happen. My favorite study in this whole line of work was done with uh, Harvard women. Uh, they were asked uh, for a period of a month, maybe more, uh, to, at the end of each day, say, how, how good was your day? I mean, how happy were you? How satisfied with it were you? And then they answered a number of other questions for, what, for to evaluate what went on during the day, or just report uh, what day of the week was it, uh, uh, how was their sex life uh, that day, how did the work go, uh, how much sleep did you get, uh, et cetera. Uh, and you now, at the end of all of this, you can see how much these things actually affected their mood. And you ask people, oh, by the way, we'd just be interested in knowing how much you think each of these things influenced your mood in general. There was no correlation whatsoever between the actual impact of these things on people's mood and people's reports about the mood. And if instead of saying, what, how much did these things affect you, you would say, Let's take a hypothetical person, Jane. Tell me how you think uh, each of these things would affect her. Well, she gives the same answer that she would have given for herself. She's no more right about Jane than she is about herself. Uh, so, but we, you know, we have a conviction that we know things like, I mean, you're telling me I don't know what makes me happy or unhappy? I mean, give me a break. 
Uh, sorry, can't give you a break. <laughs> <laughs> cool. My name is Richard. I think about inference.